ground at Birmingham boiled over. Cleland angrily climbs from his wrecked car after an incident with Sittner that effectively cost the Vauxhall man his title chance. Sittner, in hot pursuit of his rival, tries to press home the advantage just a little too keenly on the final corner, and both men finish in the barrier. Sittner's sporting acceptance of the blame was ignored by Cleland at Birmingham, but accepted with apologies and a handshake at Donington. <laughs> <laughs> the signal that battle would be rejoined here in round 11. Sittner against Cleland for honours in the new two-litre class that forms the exciting foundation for next year's championship. But ahead of the two-litre cars on the grid, the Ford Sierras running their last races in current Class A trim. And near the head of the field, two more great rivals, Andy Rouse and Rob Gravitt, who at Donington was poised for this final Class A title. Surprisingly, though, for a man with seven race wins, Gravitt off the front row of the grid, a front row of Andy Rouse and Tim Harvey. Gravitt alongside Graham Good on row two. Row three was a rather troubled Lawrence Bristow and Dave Brodie, one of the great characters returning to the championship. Quickest man in Class B, once again John Cleland in the Vauxhall Cavalier, but pushed hard by Tim Sugden and Frank Sidner. Murray Walker describes the action. 15 laps of Donington's superb circuit and this is the race that could decide the Class A and B British Championships. Andy Rouse in pole position on the left, Tim Harvey second fastest on the right, straight through the middle. A great start from row two by Rob Gravitt in the White Sierra. Down to Redgate, Rouse leads, Gravitt alongside him. Behind him in third place, it's Tim Harvey. Then Sean Walker, Lawrence Bristow in fifth position. Down to the greener curves at 120 miles an hour. Russ, Gravitt, Harvey. Sean Walker is fourth. Lawrence Bristow is fifth. Into the old hairpin at 80 miles an hour. Accelerating away. In car with Rob Gravitt. Up to McLean at 120 miles an hour. Andy Rouse in front of him. Watch Rob changing gears. Third gear for the right-hander at McLean's and now up to Coppice. Here they come. Andy Rouse, Gravitt, Harvey, Walker. Out of Coppice, down the exhibition straight at 130 miles an hour, on towards the chicane. And Sean Walker is challenging Harvey. He's going through at the chicane. Walker, number four, goes up into third position ahead of Tim Harvey. Lawrence Bristow is still in fifth position. Now, down to the Melbourne hairpin, where with Tim Harvey, it's Sean Walker ahead of us. You can see Andy Rouse leading, Rob Gravitt second. Looking back from Frank Sittner's BMW, there's Bob Berridge and he's been hit by Jeff Allen. A collision, and that's Bob Berridge touring in, standing in for the injured David Coulthard. And it's been a very short drive in the works Cavalier for the ex-Formula Ford champion. Number 70, Bob Berridge, Vauxhall Cavalier, a long way from Cleveland for under a lap. Redgate, Rouse, Gravitt. Now, there's Sean Walker third, behind him Harvey, behind him Bristow. Then it's Graham Good and Brody. And here are the two leaders, John Cleland leading. Trainer curves. Sean Walker, number four, third position, is really flying ahead of Tim Harvey. And up ahead of them to McLean's comes Andy Rouse and he locks up his left front tyre. But he has a new lap record, 90.6 miles an hour. He's leading Rob Gravitt now by nearly two seconds. There's Rouse, Gravitt second. Walker third, Harvey fourth, Christo fifth, Graham Good, number 15th, in sixth position. Out of coppice, down the long straight to the chicane. Good is challenging. Watch him. In the Black Sierra. Lawrence Christo ahead of him. Good having a look at the chicane. But Christo keeps it behind. Now, out of the chicane, down to the Melbourne hairpin, and Harvey raises the dust on the exit. That's Dave Brody out, returning to racing after a long layoff, and it hasn't lasted very long. But out of the hairpin, 
Dennis Leach in the Sierra is being caught by the two litre leaders. Number 50, John Cleland. Number 55, Frank Sittler. Behind them is Jeff Allen in the BMW. Third in class, we're with Sittler, chasing his two litre rival, John Cleland. Now, the last time they raced, they had a collision at Birmingham. They won't want to repeat that again, but they are racing for the two litre title. Sittler. Once again, then, it's the front-wheel drive Vauxhall in front, chased by the rear-wheel drive BMW, the 1989 British champion versus the 1988 British champion. Old hairpin, out of it, they're catching Dennis Leach's Sierra. We're back again with Frank Sidner. Starkies up to McLean's, 275 horsepower plus. Frank has won the two-litre class four times this year. John Cleland has won it three times. And behind them, Jeff Allen in third position. It's all action in the two-litre class, and that's Nick Whale hitting Mark Hales in the Mitsubishi. And through goes Ian Forrest. Mark Hales has lost two places, but down the straight, Frank Sittner is going for it. Up alongside John Cleland into the chicane. John Cleland keeps his place, cuts in front, goes out, out of the chicane, down to the Melbourne hairpin again. He's still leading in the Vauxhall. Jeff Allen is closing up in the Vic Lee Motorsport BMW, third position in the two-litre class. Fierce rivalry between the man from Peebles, John Cleland, the man from Nottingham, Frank Sidner. There they go. They both need a win for the two-litre championship. Up to Goddard again, the left-hander, which leads into the start and finish straight. Vauxhall lead, BMW second. Cleland, Sidner, Sidner up alongside the rear wing of the Vauxhall, but he drops back as they go down to Redgate. Here they come. Cleland. Sittner with the blue headlamps and the blue strip over the windscreen. There's the Vauxhall out of Redgate. And that's Jeff Allen, followed by Tim Sugden, and here are the leaders up front. We are riding with Andy Rouse, the overall leader, being chased by Rob Gravitt, number 11. There he is, second. Back with the two litres, and what a battle. Frank Sittner now, right on the rear bumper of John Cleland Foxhall as they come up to Coppice. And Jeff Allen is getting closer and closer. Tim Sutton is in fourth position. Now, this is the Foxhall Cavaliers' first season in the two-litre class after John Cleland won the British Touring Car Championship last year in a Vauxhall Astra. It's terrific. Four cylinders, 16 valves, approaching 300 horsepower, and that is power. He's staying ahead of the BMWs. Up to Goddard. Clellan leads the two litres, number 50. Out of the hairpin. Sittner, Jeff Allen, number 99, third. Then it's Tim Sugden in fourth position in the two-litre class as the leader comes up to and out of Goddard to start another lap. Over the line, almost together. With Frank Sittler. And that is Mike Smith, the track star, team boss, watching the two-litres. We're back again with Sittler into Redgate. Such has been the success of the RAC's 1992 litre touring car formula in Britain that there's talk of it becoming accepted worldwide for touring car racing in future. Look at them. Cleland. Sittner. Sittner watching John Cleland's every move. There's a gap developing between Sittner in second position and the battle for third behind him as they go up to McLean's. Down through the gears, into the right-hander, tight up to the apex. Vauxhall, BMW, BMW, BMW. And now Tim Sutton is starting to challenge Jeff Allen. There's, there they are together. Sutton comes right up alongside Jeff Allen as they come out of coppice. They're alongside each other as they go down the long straight towards the chicane. Cleland leading. And there's Jeff Allen, he's kept that third place. Sugden still fourth. Jeff Allen was in the right place when he came to turn in for the chicane. They're passing now, Dennis Leach's Sierra, he's been lapped. Frank 
Sidner left-hand drive, John Clellan right-hand drive with the Vauxhall. Sidner coming up to the rear of the Vauxhall as they go into Goddard again. There is only 1.6 seconds between Clellan in the lead in the two-litre class and Jeff Allen in third place as they complete the lap. And now Sugden is challenging. Tim Sugden, fourth position in the two-litre class as they come up to Redgate, there are the leaders. And there is Sugden, he's going through on the inside. He's taken the position, he's up into third place in the two-litre class. And that is Mark Hales leading Ian Forrest and John Clark. Two BMWs chasing the Mitsubishi. Down to Redgate, absolutely together. Hales in 15th place, Forrest 16th, Clark 17th. But it's anybody's position. Now, down to the hairpin. There is Rob Gravitt still chasing Andy Rouse. Now, tyres have been Andy's problem in the past. Are they going to be again? With nigh on 600 horsepower, that really burns the rubber. Out of Goddard. First and second, Rouse and Gravitt. The men who've dominated the overall British Touring Car Championship this year. And at McLean's, it's the Mitsubishi and the BMW still together. John Clark, last there, he's retiring at the end of the season. We're going to miss him. And Hales is using new Firestone radials for the first time, and they really seem to be working. But here are the leaders in the two-litre class. Sidner and Clellan still absolutely as one. Tim Sugden behind them in third position, ahead of Jeff Allen fourth. Now... Will Tim Sugden, with the red flash on the windscreen, try to pass his team leader, Frank Sittner, in view of the championship position? I very much doubt it, but we'll see. They're together as they come out of the Craner curves, pulling away from Jeff Allen. Cleland absolutely online. And it looks as though Frank Sittner just hasn't got the horsepower to get past the Vauxhall. But he's staying ahead of Tim Sugden, who is staying ahead of Jeff Allen. Down to the old hairpin, and we're looking back now from Sidner's car. That is Tim Sugden's BMW M3. Third in class. Coppice. Out of Coppice, up to 130 miles an hour. The Vauxhall leads the three BMWs. Out of it, and Jeff Allen raises the dust just puts a wheel on the grass as he comes out of coppice and Frank Sidner is taking a look as they come down to the chicane he's going to go through and take the lead this time in the two litre class he has done it Frank Sidner the 1988 British touring car champion overall leads the two litre class and looks back now at John Clellan's Vauxhall a hairpin so Sidner ahead and it looks now as though he's going to stay there. And Tim Sugden is starting to challenge the Vauxhall. Is John Cleland in trouble? Sugden, number 56, has a look on the outside of Cleland's Vauxhall. Now goes through on the inside. He's absolutely... They go across the line together. But Cleland has got the line at Redgate. He's on the inside, and that's where he needs to be. Sugden cuts across and goes through on the inside. He's going to go through... He does it. Tim Sugden in the BMW moves up to second in class behind his team leader. And here are the overall leaders, Andy Rouse. And with him now is Rob Gravitt. They are absolutely together. The race leaders. Hey, Gravitt goes through at the hairpin. They're lapping Ray Arms. And Andy Rouse has lost the position. Rob Gravitt has got the nose of the Sierra in front. Looking back now at Andy Rouse's Ford Sierra. And it looks as though this is going to be another win now for Rob Gravitt. That's Rouse. Four times British champion Andy Rouse has had to give best again to Rob Gravitt. And there is Mike Newman in the Black Sierra, number five, passing Lawrence Bristow up into sixth position. Great gate. Mike Newman, sixth. Lawrence Bristow, who is Tim Harvey's teammate, down to seventh position. Race leaders, Rob Gravitt now, down to the old hairpin. Andy Rouse behind him, headlights blazing with Andy Rouse now, and that is Rob Gravitt ahead. Is this going to be win number eight for Rob Gravitt and for his track star team? Andy Rouse is hanging on, but look at the way Rob Gravitt pulls away down the straight. 
JK. Gravic coming up to lap a BMW, who moves across and lets him through, so there's no delay for the race leader. Andy Rouse follows him through, down to the hairpin. Gravic seems to have it made now. Up to Goddard again, the end of another lap. Gravic leads. Rouse in second position, Tim Harvey third, Sean Walker is fourth, Graham Goode is fifth, Mike Newman is in sixth position, and Rob Gravick completes the lap. But it's a furious battle for the two litres. Sidner, Sugden, Clellan, Allen, BMW, BMW, Vauxhall, BMW, in car with Clellan. And we've just had news that John has been penalised 60 seconds for being incorrectly positioned at the start, and now Jeff Allen goes through, now the fourth in class goes John Cleland, up to third goes Jeff Allen, who is ahead of us now, and John Cleland is now effectively sixth with the penalty, and he needed to win the class, but he's not giving up. Who knows, anything could still happen. Gate. these are the two litres. Sidner's on his way to maximum points, which, if he stays there, will give him the two-litre championship of 1990. This is the race leader, Rob Gravitt, leading at the hairpin. Pulling away from Andy Rouse now, we're with Tim Harvey, who is in fourth position, ahead of a Sean Walker third, but Harvey is closing on the Ford Sierra Cosworth ahead as they come down to the hairpin. Sean Walker goes wide, Tim Harvey gets alongside him. He's got the line, he's got the position as they come out, and Tim Harvey moves up into third place overall. Down to fourth overall goes Sean Walker. Graham Good is fifth, and here is Frank Sidner leading the two litres. If he can stay there, he still has a chance of the overall championship for the second time. A 45-year-old veteran has driven a fine race, but then he's been driving for 28 years, so he knows the form by now. Trainer curves and Sean Walker on the left is in trouble. Number four, he's been passed by Mike Newman in the Black Sierra, number five. Walker down to sixth position as they lap Mark Hale's Mitsubishi. And it's the last lap now for number 11, race leader Rob Gravitt. Another immaculate race for the man from Maidenhead. He took the lead on lap 11 out of 15. He's going to win for the eighth time this year to clinch the Class A British Championship. Last corner, last lap. It's going to be a victory for Gravit, but it's a new lap record of 90.6 miles an hour to Andy Rouse. Gravit wins just one and a half seconds ahead of Andy Rouse, but that's enough for Rob. And here are the two litres on their last lap. BMW, BMW, and there's the Vauxhall going off. John Cleland going off, but he keeps it going. In car with Cleland, the three BMWs pull away, and Sidner is leading his way home. There he is, with a respectful Tim Sugden behind him. It's going to be Frank Sidner's fifth win this year. It's going to give him the two-litre championship. They go out of coppice, Sidner. Sugden, Jeff Allen making a last lap challenge. It's the two works BMWs in front of him. Jeff Allen in the Vic Lee motorsport car, and he's getting closer and closer at the chicane. Sitner, Sugden, Allen, out of it. They've just got to go down to the Melbourne hairpin, out of it, up the hill, round Goddard, and that is the end of the race. Well, Sitner leads into the hairpin. Sugden second, Allen third, it's going to stay that way. Now, there are still two rounds to go of the British Touring Car Championship this year at Truxton and Silverstone. Will Frank Sidner be able to prevent Rob Gravitt from becoming the overall British champion? Well, with the best 11 scores from 13 races to count, it's mathematically possible and it's going to be interesting to see. A victory, though, that means Rob Gravitt seals up the Class A title. Eight race wins from 11 starts and hot favourite to take that overall championship. The gap to the two-litre man, Frank Sittner, 26 points. It looks comfortable indeed for Gravitt, and we'll be describing what happens in those final two races.
You'll see those in due course on Grandstand. Other motor racing news, Thierry Bootsen is leaving the Williams motor racing team to